Welcome everybody to the Solo Adventurer with me, Christian Chiller, where I play roleplay games, interactive fiction, uh, storytelling games, a whole plethora of games on my own, because sometimes it's just too hard to get people together. Um, I finally got my, can't quite see it, I snapped the clip of my Lavalier mic um, some time ago, actually at a different D&D live stream, <laughs> and I finally replaced it, so I'm going to try with that today. I think uh, if, if I would move my camera up, you'd see that so many places where I am in Berlin have these huge high echoey ceilings that seem fantastic to look at, but cause all sorts of fun with audio. Um, and especially with video, it's a pain to, to fix. But anyway, hopefully it's bearable. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever you happen to be watching and get notified of the next videos. And you can also find some more of my videos on YouTube as well. Also my website, christianchella.com. So what will we doing? Let's remind ourselves. Okay. So last week we began Frozen Offerings by Paul Bimler. Oops, and I remembered it. That Managing this game was a nightmare. <laughs> uh, a solo adventure for 7th to 10th level Dungeons & Dragons. I am playing with an old character of mine and any of you who've watched the Crit Test Dummies live stream will recognize this, uh, this character. Uh, Kansif Karamir, a half-orc cleric, light cleric who likes fire. Um, and I thought I'd dig her out because I forgot to create a new character and she's eighth level. <laughs> and um, bored after some adventures, we decided to help a dwarf, I think it was. Oh no, uh, no that's the evil person. We decided to help, yes. Oh, he's human, sorry, Thalgar. A human we met in town and helped him find his long lost brother. We set out to sea in a small boat. In fact, it was a lot smaller than I thought. It was uh, this boat here, so very small. And uh, on the way, we got attacked by a crew of shapeshifters that initially appeared to, to be uh, one of the crew's friends, but that seemed suspicious because they were long since dead. And we narrowly escaped with our lives. Kansif is down to 10 hit points and um, I forgot to bring my notebook with me, but I've got a new one here, down here, which we'll use when we need to. I think I'm going to say that Thargar, who did better than me, was an about, not charger, autocorrect, was down to about uh, 20 hit points, I think. I could obviously look back on the stream, but we'll worry about that later. <laughs> so. With that combat finished, let us begin. Uh, and if you have anything you want to help with, anything you want me to, decisions you want me to make, then please just drop it in the chat. There should be chat on any of the channels you're watching. I don't exactly know how it looks on some of them, but uh, feel free to just jump in and offer advice, paths I should follow, etc., etc. So with that, let us begin. And the other thing we remember with this adventure is it did not have clickable links. So we have to keep scrolling backwards and forwards, frantically, unfortunately. But we did defeat the Scions, barely. So we'll go to 53. Uh, okay. Uh, da, da, da. As you and Thalgar finish your fight, the crew of Aurora drive off the last of their own attackers. If you are pulled into the water by the deep scions, the sailors of Aurora quickly help you get warm and dry. A quick search of the fishing boat and the bodies of the strange creatures turns up fishing tackle and a light crossbow, but nothing else of interest. Toss all the bodies over, Arturo yells, and get back to the oars, you useless dogs, which include us, actually. The crew quickly obey, and you soon see the reason for Arturo's urgency, thick, Grey clouds dominate the eastern sky, rolling over the town of Lonelywood on the far shore and quickly advancing across Mayor Dualdon toward you. 
turning Aurora to port. I don't know if that's port or starboard, but anyway. Uti begins sailing for the western shore of Mael Duhaldon, the crew rowing furiously to aid the ship's progress. You fancy you see smoke plumes rising from the distant shore. The village of the Braca tribe, Thalgar mutters. That's where Malgar is. He looks at you, bro furrowed with hope, with worry, I hope. Atir mutters darkly, eyeing the approaching storm front. Shelter, he mumbles thickly. Western Cove. Should we be worried? you ask Thalgar. The warrior shakes his head. We'll beat it to shore. Atir will drop us near the Braca village, then he'll shelter in Knucklehook Cove and wake the storm out. I wonder if we get a chance to heal. I am a cleric and I think we do need some healing. <laughs> we will see. Okay, turn to entry 70. There's a dragon there. Still have a problem with scrolling. Da, 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 da. 70. Oh. Sometimes I don't quite understand these very short passages. It isn't long before Aurora, under Ertia's expert guidance, enters the more sheltered waters of Knucklehook Cove. Go to 37. Back we go again. Is that dragon again? <laughs> Tempting me every time. Teasingly, I think, is actually the right word. You disembark upon the western shore of Mea Dualdon as dark grey storm clouds roll in overhead, casting an ominous shadow over an already bleak landscape. The choppy waves of the lake break against the shore, pounding down and then draining through the stones with a hiss. In the distance to the southwest, mountains lie in the horizon. Between you and them, between you and them, sorry, spreads a barren, nearly featureless plain, with only a few boulders and some low hills and gullies to break up the icy expanse. Everything is white and frozen. The only other visible feature lies about half a mile inland from the stony beach. You see a small settlement, protected from the winds by a well-constructed fence made of upright logs. You wonder where the villagers might have gotten those, but as your eye wanders north, you see a mountainside covered in pine. Forests can be found out here after all, but they are few and far between. Behind you, Aitya orders his crew to prepare Aurora to relaunch back out into Maya Dualdon. That's the Broca village, Thalgar says quietly, looking toward the settlement. What's the best way to proceed here, you ask? Creep up on them? Thalgar shakes his head. No point, he replies. You can rest assured, they already know we're here. They know all that goes on. And if you hadn't noticed, there's no cover. Nothing to conceal us if we wanted to sneak up on them. So what's the plan? Thalgar takes a breath, considering, then exhales. <sighs> the way I see it, he says, we have three options. Fighting is not one of them. We can either negotiate with the broker for Malgar's release, trying to come up with some compromise. We can offer gold for Malgar, attempt to pay for my brother's life. And the third option, you ask? Deception, Thalgar replies. We trick them some. Thalgar pauses mid-sentence. You look towards the village and see that three figures are quickly approaching on horseback, clad in furs and heavily armed. It takes only a few moments for the skilled riders to cover the distance. They rear up before you, their leader coming to the fore, not bothering to dismount. Chief Godbill welcomes you, Southerners, and invites you to join him in his longhouse. His tone makes it sound less like an invitation than a demand, and your eyes pass 
to the other two tribesfolk who sit impassively astride their mounts, silently gazing into the middle distance. Thalgar turned to you. Looks like negotiations have begun, he says. Just gonna take a quick drink of water. I may take this opportunity to do a little bit of healing um, for the two of us. Um, I've used quite a few spells in that last encounter. Um, I wonder, but we are quite weak. Do I have any healing potions? Um, oh, I have six. Okay. <laughs> Seems like a good time to use some. Um, I give two to Thalgar, two myself. So that is four. Quite a lot. So that is 44 plus four each. Uh, two, three, four. That would be 12 for me. That's, that's enough. And for Thalgar, let us see. Also 12. Oh no, sorry, 14. I forgot to add the two. I think I did the same for me. Four even, so sorry. Ay, 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 another four. And at 16 then for Thalgar. So he's on 36 out of something, <laughs> something quite high. Um, okay, let me very quickly check actually. Let me just very quickly get his sheet up. I just realized I'm using the wrong bits. There we go, 68. Excellent, right, where were we? 11. Back we go to number 11. Oh, we'll get some music soon. This looks like a very long passage. <laughs> oh, wow. No, eight, nine, ten. No, where is it? 11, 11, where are you, 11? This is why clickable links would be fantastic. Uh, 13, 12, where is 11? Ah, okay, this looks like it's going to be quite long. So I hope you like the sound of my voice. <laughs> you are escorted into the center of the village by mounted warriors. Led to a long wooden building, decorated with the skulls of all sorts of beasts. I'm just being asked a question, so... So um, this, Frozen Offerings, was actually free in the last Dragon Magazine. Um, so if you look for Dragon Magazine, the Wizards of the Coast magazine, you'll find it actually linked from there. Um, and it was on DMs Guild. But I get these from various places. This is just where this one is from. <laughs> Others come from different places. I got a lot from a recent Itch bundle, but this one came from the last Dragon Magazine. So you can enjoy it there yourself. Mounting a set of stairs, you enter through the open doorway into an interior lit by a large central fire pit. The Brooker tribesfolk, young and old, watch as you enter the longhouse, the distrust clear in their eyes. Some laugh openly. <laughs> as if you and Thalgar are a couple of errant youths unaware of how foolish they appear. Chief Godville, one of the warriors in your escort bellows out. Visitors from the town across the lake. Ah, a voice booms from the far end of the room. Come to barter for the life of the poacher, eh? Well, you're too late. Slowly, your eyes adjust to the firelight, and you see that the voice belongs to a hulking warrior 
whose great beard has a blue tint. The prisoner has already been taken to Angnus's lair. Murderer! Salgar yells, starting towards the chief. You condemn my brother to death, all for your cursed superstitions. You grab Thalgar's arm, managing to restrain him. Flanking the barbarian chief, two warriors take a step forward, hands on the hilts of great swords. There's no point in arguing, you say under your breath. We must gain information. Do not think of the following, the chief warns. Oh, sorry, you do not think of following, the chief warns. You'll never catch them anyway. They are Braca. They have lived their lives on these plains and can navigate the ice as well as any native creature. You had best give up this foolishness and scurry back to your home across the water. Thalgar visibly rankles at the words, his eyes narrowing. Your grip on his arm tightens. We will figure this out, Thalgar. Control your anger. And you should be proud, the chief goes on. The poacher gives his life for the noblest of causes, keeping this village safe, keeping disease at bay, for the worm must be appeased. You take a step forward, bowing your head slightly. Thank you for welcoming us into your longhouse, great chief, you say. I have a question. What if we were to pursue? The chief laughs. I suppose you are welcome to try, but it is pointless. You'll never catch my warrior party. You pause for effect. And then ask another question. And what if we were to perhaps slay this dragon? There is silence then shock at your audacity. Around the chief, warriors murmur amongst themselves. You do not know the Brucker dialect, and so you have no idea what they are saying, but you fancy you hear notes of incredulity. Impossible. The chief says dismissively. The dread Anganath cannot be slain. The gods protect her. You will simply be eaten. No more, no less. But what if we did, you say, persistent. I like how my character is being determined here. I'm not sure if that's what my character would do, but anyway. <laughs> Imagine for a minute that we did slay Anganath. What then? The chief blows out a breath, frowning. <sighs> then you would free this village from a bondage that has lasted centuries. But I tell you, it cannot be done. You bow your head. We thank you, chief, you say differentially. If you will allow it, we will make camp in your village. We won't be a bother. The chief waves a hand. Stay in my longhouse, he says. It is warm and the night is cold. There are many bedrolls here, so sleep where you want. Dark is falling. I can tell you now, your quarry will not be journeying through the night. You will lose no advantage by resting here. You sense that the chief doesn't speak entirely truly, but still... You weigh his words carefully. Bowing your head once more, you step away. The Brucker tribe's folk regard you differentially now. When you pass, they move back a step, as if not certain what to make of you. Glancing at Thalgar, you see he is overcome with emotion, and you lead him away sitting him down by a pair of bedrolls on the far wall of the light longhouse. Calm yourself, Thalgar, you say. I have a plan. Thal uh, Kansif was not the sort of character that had plans a lot in the past, but okay. Um, to wait until nightfall and then leave the Brocker village, turn to entry 69. To rest the night, taking a long rest, and leave early, 
go to entry 14. To search for possible allies, go to 54. Now, we both really do need a long rest. <laughs> but, I don't really like option one. I don't have night vision. Searching for possible allies could be interesting, and then we could have a rest after that, I suppose. Ooh. I guess we could do that first and then rest. Let's see. So, 54. Holding for the scroll. Here we go. I need a quick keyboard shortcut to flip backwards and forwards when I'm scrolling. Uh, I need to make a note of all these things I need to do. <laughs> Seeking allies. Oh. You settle down with Thalgar along the wall of the longhouse to talk. Several pairs of eyes watch you, but you keep your voices low. Eventually, even these loyal Brucker warriors lose interest. If we could find an ally among them, you whisper, it might help us track the warrior party on the plains. Thalgar nods, breathing heavily to help keep his anger at bay. Yes, he says, an ally. Who? Patience, you say. And keep your eyes open. As casually as possible, you watch the interactions between Chief Gudgeville and his inner circle of warriors as you interpret. I have suddenly lost my... And pretend to bed down for the night. Where have I got to interpret from? <laughs> Make a DC intelligence investigation or wisdom now, I am a cleric, so <laughs> I am definitely going to make go for the wisdom insight. Because uh, I get a plus six there, an investigation, I have a zero. <laughs> so, um, insight, I do believe, is what we are going to go for. 17, 23. I have incited to beyond. I'm not quite sure. Uh, if successful, go... No, sorry. If successful, go to entry four. Oh, dear. There's going to be a lot of scrolling here. Hang on. <laughs> we... Da, da, da. Eight. Four. Unexpected eight. Seems appropriate. You watch and wait, noticing one warrior who seems to always linger on the periphery of the hall. Paying close attention to her facial features, you see that she does not laugh when the others do, nor does she always voice her agreement. She seems to have a mind of her own, or at least that's what you hope. Slowly things begin to quiet down in the longhouse, and many of the warriors depart. The one you've been watching seems to be sleeping within the longhouse, however, and she beds down nearby. Cautiously, quietly, you come near. Gently grasping her arm, she turns her head towards you and her eyes immediately go wide with recognition as if she had just been expecting this contact. I don't agree with this superstition, this sacrifice, she says, just so you know. You nod urgently, glancing around to make sure your conversation isn't overheard. We need help, you say. We have no way of tracking the party that's taken my friend's brother to the dragon's lair. A new ally smiles softly. It is simple, she whispers. White Tooth is the name of the peak where the dragon Angath has her lair. Keep that peak in your sights at all times and you will be following the party. And do not make for the Trident Peak. That will lead you astray. Thanking the warrior for this vital information, you return to your bedroll and an expectant Thalagar, quietly relating to him all that you have learned. And I've just very quickly realised that my face is obscuring the dice rolls. Um, so I will move my face <laughs> up. Bear with me. Da, da, da. That's possibly why you're not trusting me. 
Move my dice rolls. There we go. I've moved my face up to the top. And now you can see my dice rolls. That really was a 23. I wasn't lying. There we go. Someone on um, Twitch is just asking me about YouTube, and they are on YouTube. I'm also live streaming to YouTube, so you can carry on watching later. Enjoy. Okay. So, wait until night for... Thanks, uh, Vendra. Very nice you joined. Um, to wait until nightfall, then leave the village. Turn to entry 69. To stay the night. I really think I need a long rest. <laughs> I might regret it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And leave early next morning. Go to 14. We need a long rest, and uh, neither of us can see in the dark. So uh, I think we really need a long rest. Okay, go to entry 14. Da -da -da. Gradually, the Brocker village quietens down as the tribesfolk all head to their respective sleeping places. A bone-white moon hangs in the sky outside, visible through a small window. Every once in a while, you turn your head to track its slow progress, and each time you do so, the village has become quieter. The fire pit keeps the longhouse warm, and it seems that many of Gudville's warriors sleep here. Thalgar slumbers beside you, but the warrior's sleep is fitful, and he tosses and turns, mumbling in his dreams. Soon the air is heavy with the sounds of snoring. But this doesn't keep you awake, and you two fall into a strangely deep sleep. In your dreams, you are haunted by visions of white worms and barren, empty plains where you are lost and cannot seem to find a single landmark or feature to orient self. And we had a long rest. Fantastic. Can we done with that? All right. Uh, I don't think Thalgar has any abilities of rage once per day. He didn't do it, so. Fine, nothing resets there. And I will reset his hit points to 68. He's much tougher than me. Okay. You awake just before dawn as one of Gudville's warriors enters the longhouse to stoke the fire. After shaking Thalgar awake, the two of you are soon up and out the door your breath frosting before you in the frigid air. No one notices as you slink through the Brucker village, headed for the west gate. At one stage, you notice two horses and consider stealing them, but then you notice a stable hand fetch over their feed. She would surely raise the alarm, and who knows how these tribesfolk would react to your attempted theft. You are soon out on the plain, breaking into a jog to keep the cold at bay. We'll make good time out of the wind, you say, trying to buoy Thalgar's spirits. He nods, fixing you with a hard gaze. Let's go get my brother, he says. That's the spirit. Then the two of you put your heads down and surge forth across the frozen plain. To 65. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. By the time the sun climbs into the sky, you have already covered many miles, and fatigue and the cold are beginning to set in. Still, you're in awe of the frozen beauty of this inhospitable landscape. To your east, no, that's the east, to your east, between you and the lake of Maya Dualden, a mountain range rises from the plain. As the sun heats the snow on the precipitous slopes, you hear the cracking of ice echoing across the landscape. As mid-morning, a distant rumble reaches you from the east. Turning that way once more, 
you see thick, opaque clouds of snow billowing down a mountain valley. Avalanche, Dalia remarks. Slowly, the noise subsides. Few words are exchanged between you and the warrior as you trudge southward, searching for signs of the Brucker party who are taking Malga to be sacrificed to the dragon Angnath. At about midday, you stumble across your first indication that you're on the right path. Ahead, you see three wolves feeding on some unknown creature lying dead in the snow. Thalgar shoos them away, and you move closer to inspect the corpse. It is a Bracca warrior. Their body rent by claws, their gnashes, their gashes too long and deep to have been inflicted by any wolf. Yeti, Thalgar says, immediately looking up and scanning the surrounding landscape. You do the same. Look, you say, pointing to a bloody trail. Following this a little way to the east, you find the body of a huge yeti, 12 feet tall at least, its arm hewn off and a deep wound at the base of its neck. They managed to slay the thing, you say grimly. But not without taking wounds themselves. Thalgar points to more blood on the snow, leading south. That will slow them down. With renewed enthusiasm, the warrior jumps up and immediately sets off, following the blood trail. Sighing and shaking your head, you go on after him, dreaming of a warm inn and a glass of mulled wine. Sweet at 19. All right. Da -da -da, da -da -da. With renewed vigour, you and Thalgar make your way quickly across the plain, determined to catch the party of warriors who are escorting Malgar to his death, a blood sacrifice to a white dragon. Roll a d20 uh, to determine which entry you will go to next. If you have the covert haste, add four. If you have the covert mount, add eight. I think we had haste from memory. I forgot my notebook today, but I think we had haste, so add four. Thirteen, then go to entry forty. Oops. Da -da -da -da. As the day wears on, the sun makes a welcome appearance, coming out from behind the clouds to cast its warming rays over your tired bodies. DC 14 Wisdom Survival check. Both of us? I guess, I'm not sure. Survival. I'm pretty good at survival, fortunately. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, is there anything I can do? Um, ah. Oh, I can see in the dark. I just realised. <laughs> oh well. Um, um, so I do have this playtest wild talent. You make a wisdom ability check, and before you know whether, before you know. Uh, so I could roll it. At what did I get? A seven. I will get a d eight. I'd have to get a seven plus for it to be successful. It's worth a try. No. <laughs> so we failed. Unsuccessful. Go to entry three. Oh joy. Three. 
as the sun heats the tundra, you begin to hear a cracking, creaking noise. Too late, you look ahead to where Falgar is and watch as the ice gives way beneath him, the warrior plunging through it. Keeping your tread as light as possible, you rush to the hole where Falgar fell. He's clinging onto the edge of the ice, but is already shaking, his teeth chattering loudly. You need to get him out of the numbingly cold water quickly, then give, get him warm if he is to survive. Your first task is achieved fairly easily. You haul Falgar out of the water, and the two of you carefully make your way off the ice sheet to the relative safety of the snow. Then you quickly get to work. That's interesting, because it mentions do I have any of these things, but I also have abilities that could help. But anyway, um, I did buy one of these. I did make a note. Uh, I thought I did. Llama will arm the shirt. There we go. 26. Mm. In the shelter of a low ridge, you remove Thalgar's furs and jerkin, which are soaked through. Thankfully, the warrior prefers to go without armour, or he might have been beyond saving. It's also probably quite cold. But you must still act fast, as he is beginning to shake uncontrollably, and you know that succumbing to the cold is as dangerous as any beast you might encounter out there. You succeed in getting his top layer off, doing what you can to help. Thalgar stave off the cold and come back from the brink. Thankfully, the sun comes out and you whisper a silent prayer of thanks. If you have the knucklehead oil, you can use the life-saving substance on Thalgar. Oh, okay. If you have the Lama Will undershirt, you can pull that over Thalgar's chest. Lama Will is an excellent insulator and draws moisture away from the skin. Then you cover the warrior up with his furs again. Have Thalgar make three DC-12 constitution saving throws. If you have the oil of the Lama Will undershirt, roll the saving throws as normal. If you have both, roll with advantage. Okay. What is his constitution? Plus five. So, three. Okay. Da, da, da. Might just do three at once. We have a 20, a 14, and a 14. I think they all pass, so that's good. Wow, that's actually a pretty good roll. Right to entry 67. Oops, over here. No, it's over here. 67. Your efforts have paid off. Thalgar has warmed up and is soon smiling and thanking you for your quick action. The two of you have a bite to eat, which Thalgar insists is essential. Food helps you keep warm, especially out here, he says, insisting you take some of his rations. Crisis averted, the two of you pack up and set off south once more. Okay, 70. Ah, where is it? Where's the beginning? Sorry about this. Uh, no, where is it? There we go. No, oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> As the afternoon wears on, the snow falls ever faster. If you are riding horses, you are forced to abandon them here and continue on foot. It's hard even for Thalgar with his muscular legs, who says I don't have muscular legs, to get through. Islands of high rock cliffs loom around you as you press further south toward two mountains that now dominate the skyline. Thalgar calls a halt to take a little food and to rest a while. You can both take a short rest. I don't think we need to. No, there'd be no real reason. Um, to the south, a lone... Thunderhead shaped like castle slowly moves towards you, passing between the two peaks. 
One of those mountains is surely the dragon's lair, Thalgar says darkly. But which? You study the two peaks closely. The one to the right appears to be a cluster of three smaller peaks, almost like a trident. The left-hand mountain is slightly curved, like the elongated fang of a gargantuan beast. Not wanting to linger too long, you get going across the merciless landscape toward the two mountains. Thalgor points out some odd-shaped mounds of ice ahead. Strange formations, he remarks as you continue toward them. Rounding a large rock formation, you cry out in alarm. Before you, a huge insect-like creature rears up, its long, sectioned body flanked by small wings and its large, glossy black eyes regarding you greedily. This is no dragon, but a creature known as a Remohaz. You quickly prepare for battle. And this battle may be the last thing we have time for. I think I'm spending far too much time talking. <laughs> it's the nature of these things sometimes. Uh, eight. Oh my God. Hang on, where is it? Eight. Hmm, maybe not. Drawing your weapons, you prepare for battle, but the ghastly-looking thing is motionless. Thalagar frowns, then cautiously moves forward, sticking out his great axe and giving the body of the creature a tap. It connects with an audible tink. Have you heard that? Frozen solid, Thalagar exclaims. You look around, now noticing that the strange ice formations each contain a creature of some kind, frozen in its tracks. You've heard about this sort of thing before. This is the trophy graveyard of a white dragon. In front of you are a pair of saber-toothed tigers. Over there lies a huge winter wolf. No, Thalgar shouts, and you quickly run to his side. He stands before the frozen form of a Bracca barbarian, with several more nearby. The warrior party, you say. The Bracca who are escorting Malgar to... Thalgar begins running between the ice formations, desperately looking for his brother. You join in the search, checking each frozen column of ice. But apart from the Brucker, there are no other humanoids here. Maybe he managed to escape, Thalgar says hopefully. Or, you reply darkly, Maybe the dragon took Malagar straight to her lair. Thalagar fixes you with a hard gaze, then turns southward to the mountains. Even if that is so, he states firmly, we cannot just leave. What if he is still alive somehow? We must try. You put a hand on Thalagar's shoulder. I'm with you. And indeed, over the course of this journey, you've become quite fond of the warrior. <laughs> My personality is being made up for me here and genuinely want to help him. Besides, you don't abandon your word lightly, especially not after coming this far. You know, it's more realistic. Come on, I'm in the bloody frozen wastelands. Where else am I going to go? With renewed determination, you both press on, moving towards two hulking mountains that rise to the south. The light is beginning to fade and you must act quickly. Oh, which mountain holds the dragon's lair? Now, I was told this and I didn't write it down because I thought I'd get a keyword. Ah, uh, I need to check. Hang on. Let me just find that passage again. I'm going to quickly go back to camera for a second whilst I find that passage. Um, oof. Let's see. I made a wisdom. Found it. I'm just reminding myself. Saving you the scrolls of doom. <laughs> uh, right to the name of the peak. Keep that peak in your sight. Do not go to the trident peak. Okay, there we go.
Get back to where we were. to a nice conclusion. Oh, where is it? I've lost where I'd got to. Uh, ah, got it, right. Oh no, <laughs> nearly, nearly, nearly. Uh, sorry about this. I would say skip ahead, but you can't. It's live. Just getting myself back to where we were. We know we want to go not to the uh, thunder head. There we go. Found it. All right. Okay. Don't want to go to the trident. We want to go to the fang shaped mountain. So 66. I lied. A bit more scrolling. <laughs> but it was scrolling. We hadn't seen yet. No. Should we make notes in D&D? Always make notes in D&D. With the light fading, you make your way toward the fang shaped mountain. Surely this is the one that holds the layer of the dreaded Angnath. Molded as it is, like a white fang piercing the winter sky. Thundery clouds soar overhead, and a stiff wind picks up as you near the ominous peak. As you get closer, you see a waterfall that should pour from the lower part of the mountain, frozen as if suspended in time. Now the wind is really picking up, and you see that climbing this frosty slope will take all your determination and strength. Look! Thalgar shouts above the wind. There, about halfway up. You look to where Falgar is pointing and see a yawning cave mouth. That's the lair, surely. You agree that if a dragon were to lair anywhere in this frozen domain, that would be the place. Surveying the steep slope, you realise it is going to be a challenge to reach that cave mouth, especially with night fast approaching. Do you possess a climbing kit? Uh oh I do. Thank you. Thank heaven for that. I don't know why I do, but I do. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, go to entry 29. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 da. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Easy climb. To climb the, to climb the mountain with the climber's kit, make three DC 10, Strength athletics, athletics Checks, with disadvantage if you have the code word Wanda, I do not. Every time you fail a check, okay. For Thalgar, make a single, why? Why is he better than me? Okay, three Athletics Checks. Uh, she's plus three for me. Uh, DC 10, okay. First one is a success. Second one is a success just, and finally, it's also a success. Excellent. And Thalgar make a single DC 14 strength. Wow. Um, and his strength is plus five. Eight plus five, that means he has failed by one point. <laughs> Unless he has anything that can help. Oh, athletics is plus six. Excellent, he did pass it, I think. Yes, just, <laughs> literally just passed. Amazing, wow, good job I noticed that. Uh, once you have completed ability checks, you have quite so close, okay, now. If you have not perished, <laughs> I have not perished. Okay, excellent. I have not perished. Uh, go to 10. Mm -hmm. 10, 10, 10. 
Where is 10? Uh, I read all this, I thought, 10, 8, 10. You pull yourself up onto a wide, flat ledge, the huge moor of the cave mouth standing open before you. Great cracks in the mountain run hundreds of feet upward and grotesque formations in the pressurized hardened rock evoke the images of all sorts of ghastly creatures. You glance at Thalgar. His eyes are wide, his face set in grim determination. Looking back at you, he gives a nod and the two of you move quietly forward toward the cave mouth. It is dark inside the cave as night has almost completely descended. But a sound comes from within, echoing in the cavernous space beyond. The dragon's voice rasps and crackles like the sound of ice fracturing on the side of a mountain. But it strikes you as less impressive than you'd expected. You both stop and listen pressing yourself against the rock beside the entrance. Yes, she lies in frozen waste, the great Agnath, my tyrant of a mother, may she rot in the nine hells. A young dragon? Agnath is gone. Perhaps this fight won't be as deadly as you're expecting. And then a vo another voice speaks. You killed her? It asks meekly. Malgar, Thalgar whispers, a glimmer of hope entering his eyes. The dragon has kept Malgar alive for some reason. Who are you talking to? Oh, I see. Okay. Slightly confused then. Um, of course, it is the way in our family. When the child comes of age, the older parent is killed off and the tradition is maintained. The Brucker bring their monthly sacrifice and in return we spare their pitiful little village from our breath's devastation. Then the dragon gives a chilling laugh. But I care for nothing of this. Empty tradition. I want to travel the dale far and wide to see what is beyond this sad little plain. So after I eat you and raise the Brucker village, I shall fly on, perhaps to the human town that I know sits nearby. But what is its name? Tell me of it, little one. For these tribes folk are the, the only humans I've ever talked to, and they are so very dull. Tell me of the lands beyond this plain and this lake, and I may let you live a little longer. Who knows, I may even spare you, although in truth that is not very likely, and then I shall leave this cursed place. All Icewind Dale will fear the mighty Zakrath. So the young white dragon Zakrath, spawn of Agnath, has let Malgar live in order to learn more of the lands beyond this plain. But how long can Malgar keep talking? How extensive is his knowledge? A glance at Thalgar's face tell you his thinking exact same thing. He's never left Targos, Thalgar whispers urgently. Come on. The warrior motions you to follow him inside the cave as stealthily as you can. Glowing lichen creates enough light to see inside the cave, so don't be concerned if your character doesn't have dark vision. Oh, thank you. But as you follow, you find yourself thinking that creating a diversion might be useful. I'm wondering if this is a good point to stop. I get the impression that part three will not be so long, but I get the feeling if I continue, I might be going on for some time, and I do, unfortunately, need to get home <laughs> and play actually a game of Vampire the Masquerade, uh, not streaming, um, in 90 minutes. So I think we will call it a day there. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me on this solo adventurer. I realize I need to make a new end screen. I haven't made a new end screen for this new layout of the stream yet. But uh, I do not have a website yet, but you can find more at twitch.tv slash the solo adventurer. You can find details on my YouTube channel. Just look for Christian Chiller. I think it's actually Christian Chiller UK at the moment. I will fix that soon, hopefully, when I get enough subscribers. You can also find more about me on christianchiller.com and find the archived YouTube videos and many other things. Tweet at me, at Chris Chinch as well, if you like, and then find out about some of my other channels too. But to see what happens next, will our half-orc and dwarf creep stealthily inside and surprise the dragon? Will they create a diversion or will they just charge in and fight? Tune in 
next Friday, that is the 11th of February, 11th of February, I wish, 11th of December, <laughs> 11th of December, uh, 17.30, 5.30 p.m. Central European time. That's UTC plus two, I think, right now. Um, so until next time, uh, keep playing however you can, and I will see you next week. Thank you very much for joining.